Before I started acrylic pouring, I'd been working on this mixed media piece. And then I found pouring and nothing else has happened with any other art for quite some time. Hi, I'm Sherry. I want to welcome you to my studio today. I decided it would be beautiful to pour over the bedding area. So I came up with some colors and I did some tests. So after all the deliberation and trials and errors, mainly errors, I've decided to kind of pour and kind of paint. Uh, I think this is just beautiful, but I do want some of the background to show up. And I think this is gorgeous, but it's not pouring, and I'm trying to work in another technique. Let's see what we can come up with. She is made of several layers of tissue paper that have, some have print on them, some have stamping, some have handwriting, and they all have paint on them, and then they're all layered up together, and I uh, watercolored the top layer and so I don't want that messed up by my acrylic pouring Please don't leak under there. I should probably be more careful. I'm thinking of uh, the perfect contrast to the perfect color to make shadow on um, hot pink or red is green. So that's what's going on here. The other day I mixed up a whole new batch of phthalo green and totally forgetting that it was down uh, in the tub of paints to work on this painting. <laughs> These are all transparent, but when the GAC 800 uh, dries clear, they will darken and show the color below. And now for the pouring part. I don't know why I'm not wearing gloves. I also don't have my piece over a tub this time, which can be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> Gonna put a little bit of gold in here. out just what I want. Wouldn't that be a shocker? So I'm starting to think this isn't really a pour. It's more like um, palette painting with pour paint.
So I have two, two questions so far. Would you qualify this as palette painting, palette knife painting, or pouring, or some hybrid? And the second question is, if I do more of this sort of thing, would you watch? And then my third question is, what the heck should I do with my background? Whoops. I paint, I stenciled the background on, and then I did some faux finish tricks to it. <gasps> that was more than I wanted. I just wanted to make a little, well, shooky looky. Well, I was trying to be controlled, but maybe I'm not going to end up all that controlled. <laughs> so let me know if you even think this qualifies as poor painting. And even if it doesn't, if you think it's okay to do this sort of thing on my channel. Of course it's okay to do it, but we watch it. <laughs> Whoops, it did get on her ass. Oh, I'm sorry, her bottom end. Well, drafting tape works in the sense that I wanted it to, to that it doesn't stick, but it doesn't really work as a mask. Okay, I hope y'all will answer my questions in the comments below. But let me know. I will come back when this is dry and we'll see if it gave me what I wanted. Ow! One thing I love about the GAC 800 is how quickly it dries. Uh, this, of course, I did put this on rather thin, but even so, wow, it dries so fast. Uh, it's been about four hours, perfectly dry. Um, I'm going to bring the camera down so we can look at some of this close up. Oops, I'm going to try anyway. So, we can still see uh, the original paper. We can see some reflectivity from the gold. And where the greens got into the cracks. All in all, I'm pretty happy with this. I think I probably will go back and touch up the line so that it's even across. It looks more like, you know, when the fabric flows. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Now I just need to figure out what to do with all that green. Ugh. Okay, bye. Thanks for watching.